One Piece, ladies and gentlemen, is on break this week. And next week. And the week after that, and the week after that, and the week at wait. And the week after that. Okay, yeah, so we got a month break of One Piece. It's okay, we can get through this, and Oda understands our plight. So we have some extra bonus material that is being released while uh, One Piece is on this month-long hiatus, while Oda can take a much-deserved rest and then travel down to South Africa to see the filming of the One Piece Netflix series. So, we have, to my knowledge, we have two volumes of this bonus material that are going to be coming out. Okay, so the first volume is already out, the second one will be coming out soon, and and it's called Road to Laugh Tale. This is a road, and this is Laugh Tale. The Road to Laugh Tale. I assume it's paved with candy. You know, they just get to Laugh Tale, and the One Piece is just a giant pile of chocolate. All right, and then the guy from the SpongeBob episode pops out, and he's like, Chocolate! Chocolate! And then, you know, there you go. Actually, for Big Mom, that would have been perfect. You can kind of understand why Big Mom was seeking out the One Piece this whole time. Um, but anyway, yeah, we have the first volume of Road to Laugh Tale out now. Um, I have some volumes over over here because there is there is an island that is mentioned in this like I, I I guess it's sort of a data book there is an island that is mentioned in this data book specifically that has not like it's never been relevant but like the moment in the story it might have been relevant was like way back during like the Skypea arc and then all of a sudden it's just dropped here out of nowhere going into the final saga so I don't even know what to make of it it might just be like a red herring but we'll get to it when we get to it so anyway, um, I have it pulled up right here. There are three major sections to uh, Road to Laugh Tale Volume 1. There's One Piece Next, then One Piece Deep, and then there's just some concept art of like various, like like the Wano designs, the Battle at Onigashima, like some other artwork that Oda thought for their like outfits, like the Straw Hats and stuff. You know, and then some of the Kozuki clan members and the Scabbards and stuff like that. So probably not going to go into that too much. Um, the One Piece Next page is only like a single double page spread, and all it really is is just a promotion to get ourselves as hyped as possible for the final saga of One Piece. <clears throat> I'm gonna say this in the most epic voice ever and I sort of have to say this it's like a bunch of images of Roger are all over the page okay because this is all about the end of One Piece the final saga the final portion of this story is now happening and it even says here you know the Pirate King the new Pirate King will be you know crowned very soon so let me try to read this in the most epic Roger voice I can manage. <clears throat> the great pirate Aramati started with the final words of the King of the Pirates, the man who had obtained everything the world had to offer. Now, countless brave warriors are vying for his throne. 25 years have passed since I, Goldie Roger, conquered the Grand Line. The birth of the next pirate king is nearly upon us, matey. Yarg! I might have added a couple of extra mateys and yargs in there because, you know, he is the Pirate King after all. But that's pretty much all it is. Double page spread of Roger laughing from chapter 969 and all the other scenes of Roger being the King of the Pirates. You know, the, the first scene in the manga where he's there at the scaffold about to be executed and he's like, you know, want my treasure, matey? Well, you can have it! I left everything I own in one piece, you know? So, the birth of the next Pirate King King is upon us at the end of this story it will happen we already knew that but it's really cool something to bring up here the only thing I could really mention on this page is it mentions 25 years have passed okay and so if somebody may be a little confused by that because uh, you know Roger was executed 24 years ago uh, so 25 years ago is when he actually found the one piece and the news spread over the world you know it wasn't like Roger found the one piece and he was executed like the next week or whatever there was about a year there where he was like in enjoying that fame, or rather infamy, I should say, of being the Pirate King. Now, for the most part, right after they found the One Piece, Roger disbanded the crew, because he sort of understood what was going to happen, and he knew he didn't have long left for this world anyway, okay? Also, upon finding the One Piece, whatever it was, they realized the crew together that they got there too early. And so Roger knew that, like, alright, I'm not gonna be able to make it, you know, 20-something years in the future when Joy Boy is supposed to return, or something with the Mermaid Princess, or the Ancient weapons, you know, whatever the stipulation is, you know, we got there too early, we rushed a little bit too much, but if I have a son, they can maybe fulfill it, and so Rayleigh was like, you know, what are you talking about, Roger? You don't have a kid, and then Roger's like, well, not yet, matey! 
<laughs> you know, it's just like so. Then he spent most of that year traveling down into the South Blue, um, meeting Rouge, and then you know they you know had a baby. They had Ace together. Of course, Ace was not born until much after you know Roger's death or execution to make sure that you know he wasn't found by the Marines and stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's basically just the first page though, just double page spread trying to get us all hyped up for what's to come. So next up we have One Piece Deep: The Way to Laugh Tales. So the first page here is a timeline of. Roger's life. Now, I got really excited when I saw this at first because I thought we were going to find out some new information. We get some stuff, and I don't even know if some of this stuff is new, like, because there's so much information floating around in One Piece, you know, stuff in the data book, stuff in the Viva card, stuff in the SBS, stuff in the manga that was referenced that I might have just forgotten about, okay? But I'm going to go through this. Okay, so 77 years ago, Roger was born in Logtown in the East Blue. He was born on December 31st. It was New Year's Eve, Okay. And mystery number of years ago, uh, he formed the Roger Pirates. I feel like you could have gotten away with just revealing that. I feel like Roger was not the same age as Luffy when he formed the Straw Hats. Luffy was 17 when he headed out from Fusha Village and met Zoro and, you know, initially formed the crew. I would say a pirate crew is formed as soon as you recruit your first mate or your first, you know, crew member, okay? So the Straw Hat crew, as like an actual pirate crew, was formed the moment that Luffy uh, asked Zoro to join and he accepted. Okay, boom. Straw Hat crew was born on that day. Likewise, going with that same logic, I would say that the Roger Pirates were formed on that fateful day when Roger met Rayleigh and Rayleigh was on that ship that he had stolen because his house had burned down. You know, Rayleigh looked like he had sort of a rough life leading up to that point, but he seemed pretty chill about it. He was like just sitting there drinking out of his flask and he was like, yeah, my house burned down, so I just stole this guy's boat and now I'm living on that. Anyway, what's up with you, stranger? Nice straw hat you got there. Glug, glug, glug. And Roger was like, Aye, it's a mighty ship you have there, Rayleigh. How about I join you? We become a pirate crew and then turn the world upside down. And Rayleigh's just, glug, glug, glug. You know, I am just drunk enough to think that that's a good idea. Let's do this. You know, and so that right there, the Roger Pirates were formed. I like to think Roger was in his early 20s when that happened. I don't think he was quite, like, you know, the same age as Luffy. I think he was a little bit older, okay? Um, but we don't know. It's not revealed here. I don't know why. You probably could have thrown that in there a little bit as, like, an extra piece of information just to tie everything together. Um, about 50 years ago, uh, that was when he was renowned as a rookie, okay? Because remember when Brooke was at uh, Shockey's Bar and they were talking about Roger, Brooke was on a ship when all of the major stuff happened. You know, he was floating adrift in the Florian Triangle for 50 years. He missed out on all that information for 50 years, okay? But Brooks still vaguely recalled Roger, like the name Roger, as like, oh yes, there was like a prominent rookie, I think, back in my day named Roger? Maybe it was the same guy. I don't know. So 50 years ago, this would have been... Well, actually, hold on a second here. Okay, so if 77 years ago he was born, and then around 50 years ago is when he was referred to as a rookie, that would put him already at 27 years old, okay? And just for reference, look how fast it took Luffy to become referred to as a super rookie in the world, right? Not even a year had passed from when he left, uh, you know, Fusha, traveled through the East, got into the Grand Line, reached the Sabaody Archipelago. That was like, I don't know eight, nine months, maybe ten months at best. It wasn't even a year, okay? So, you know, it's possible that, yeah, Roger started a little bit later, maybe took him a little bit longer. The Grand Line was definitely a lot more dangerous back then than it is now, so you have to take that into consideration. But I love the little things about that, like, in the story that Oda remembers. It's like, okay, so how would Brooke respond to hearing the word Roger? Because he was from a completely different era, and he had no um, updated information on the entire world for 50 damn years. So so it's like, wait, he remembered Roger, but in a completely different context, okay? Um, 39 years ago, Roger reached Lodestar Island and restarted his voyage from scratch. That's what it says. Now, that's an interesting one right there. So he reached the end of the Grand Line with the log pose, the thing that it actually points to. The last island is Lodestar Island, and we don't know anything more about it other than that's where apparently you find out about the road poneglyphs. By the way, we find out here it might not actually be road poneglyph. It might be load poneglyph. Which really should surprise no one because it's Lodestar Island and you find out about the road poneglyphs there. So if they were actually, if the correct terminology, if the correct way to like say it is load rather than road, 
it works either way. It's also like, because I remember when Load Star Island was initially mentioned, some of the translations called it Road Star Island. Now, like a Load Star in the sky is like, okay, we're going to lock onto that star to guide us because that's how they had to do it back in the day, all right? So it doesn't matter, though, if it was called Road Star or Load Star or Road Poneglyph, Load Poneglyph. The same basic premise is like it's pointing or guiding you somewhere or to a specific location, like a Load Star or a Road does, okay? But I think it's Load Poneglyph. Not road Poneglyph. Whatever. Anyway, it also mentions that he restarted his voyage from scratch at that point, which means Roger, it's interesting when you think about it, the Straw Hats sort of have the benefit of the Roger Pirates laid out the groundwork for them already, okay? And so they met people that had traveled with Roger, like Inu Arashi and Nekamamushi and the Kozukis. They'd already done this voyage before. Yeah, Neko and Inu did not actually go to Laugh Tale, but they knew a lot about traveling with Roger, okay? And the Poneglyphs and what you need. So so by the time the Straw Hats reached Zoe, it was like, yeah, so normally you would continue on this journey, reach Load Star Island, and then find out about all of the Poneglyphs, the, the Load Poneglyphs or whatever. But now we could just tell you because we were on Roger's crew. We found out everything about it. So it's sort of like a shortcut for the Straw Hats. Roger had to do all of this from scratch. He had nobody helping him out, okay? Which makes me really want, like, a Roger-themed, like, prequel story to One Piece after it's over. You know what I mean? Like, that would just really work, okay? So, um... But he reached Lodestar, found out about the road Poneglyphs, and he had to still go out and find them. So he was like, okay, mateys, I, I guess we're restarting our voyage from scratch. Let's start all over and, you know, go new game plus with this. You know, basically that's what it was, like new game plus, essentially, okay? Um, and there's like an extra DLC at the end or whatever, okay? So that's that. Uh, right after that, so one year after uh, Lodestar Island was 38 years ago, and we all know what happened 38 years ago, that's right. God Valley. God Valley happened. You know, the only thing I wanted to bring up here is that this was actually something that I overlook every time I talk about God Valley. The reason why Garp and Roger were fighting, well, you know, the whole reason why they were there, like God Valley, yeah, to fight rocks. But remember, it was the Tenryubito's island. So they were sort of fighting for the Tenryubito. You know, not because they wanted to, of course, because the Tenrybito lived there and they had their slaves and everything. I think it was just more for the fact that, like, Rox's, uh, if Rox were to win that battle and take command of God Valley, the end result of that would have been far worse than allowing the Tenrybito to just rule with their slaves. Because th that fight, that battle ultimately benefited the Tenryubito because Garp and Roger beat back rocks, the Tenryubito were still alive, and they were able to keep all of their slaves. Now, God Valley disappeared, but at the end of the day, rocks if he won, would have probably slaughtered all the Tenryubito and maybe even freed the slaves along the way. So it's kind of a weird thing that Garp and Roger were fighting on that side, but... It just goes to show that if Rox would have won, the end result would have been, like, several orders of magnitude worse than, like, allowing some Tenrubito to stay alive. So that's why they had to push back Rox, okay? Uh, now, now this is something, I don't know if this is new or not, but it says 28 years ago, so 10 years after God Valley, that is when Roger contracted an incurable disease. I feel like this was mentioned before, but I don't remember it specifically where it was, so if that's the case, okay, we now have a definitive um, moment, a year, when Roger began to develop this, uh, the symptoms of his illness. We still don't know what the illness was, or, you know, exactly how you contract it, or whatever, but he got it when uh, he was 49 years old, so 28 years ago. Um, and it worked pretty fast, because he was executed 24 years ago, so four years after he started exhibiting symptoms, um, and, you know, he was executed, of course, but the implication was he didn't have a lot of time left anyway. So, even if he didn't get executed, he might have made it to maybe five years with this illness, maybe six years with this illness, not long left. Well, remember Crocus, you know, right as soon as, like, they were nearing the end of their voyage, Crocus was like, you have about a year left to live. So, yeah, he, he probably, he might have even died, like, a couple of months after his execution date. Like, if he never got executed, like, the next month he could have died anyway. It was really close, it seemed. Roger was just a really tough guy, so any, any like, uh, showing or exhibiting of, like, symptoms or, like, disease didn't really, you know, bring him down too much. He wasn't, like, bedridden or anything, but, like, he was still really, really sick, you know what I mean? So that's that. Um, 27 years ago, it was the Battle of the Ed War against Shiki. Now, 
I love this because I, I think it's already been like confirmed that everything in the One Piece Strong World manga in Chapter Zero, not the Strong World movie, but the Strong World novel or the, like the small little bonus chapter that came out, that thing. That was already confirmed to be canon in the story of One Piece, okay? But I just like that they're cementing it in here again that, yes, it is. It is canon. Ed War is canon. When Shiki met Whitebeard, that's canon. When uh, Shanks went to go recruit Yasop at Syrup Village, the way that it happened there is canon, okay? I already knew that. I'm sure a lot of other people knew that. I'm just glad it's in here as like, okay, just remember that actually did happen that way, okay? Um, right, because it's easy to just look at it like it's something from the movie, you know, and it's just it's not really canon or whatever, okay? Um, let's see. Then 26 years ago, that's when Roger and Whitebeard clashed on that island, and he met Odin, and he asked him to join his crew for one year so that they could read Poneglyphs and they can figure out the, the location of Laugh Tale, okay? Um, then we cut to 25 years ago, when Roger successfully conquered the Grand Line. He named the final island Laugh Tale. He disbanded the Roger Pirates. Now, this begins a year where the only real thing we know is that at one point, well, there's a few things. We know at some point he had a drink with Whitebeard. We know he spent a lot of his time in the South Blue with Rouge. And we know eventually he turned himself in over to Garp, okay? But the timeline doesn't go any more specifically into, like, when he did these things or how long he was in different locations or whatever. Uh, but it was all within the last year of his life, okay? Probably also a smart thing that Oda did that. So now we have a year of Roger's life where he was the King of the Pirates. And we can explore that even more so in flashbacks. We can maybe see a moment where Roger, during that last year of his life, is, like, reflecting back on all the stuff that he accomplished and all the adventures that he had been on and what he personally thinks, like, just by himself. Not when he's trying to, like, you know, talk up the crew or whatever. Like, we're the king pirate crew, matey! Yay! You know, whatever. What did Roger feel about that, like, on his own? Maybe when he was just with Rouge or something, like, on the South Blue. Maybe Rouge one day was like, you know, so they're calling you the king of the pirates, huh? And maybe Roger was like, I, I don't know why they're calling me a king. I don't consider myself a king. You know, he maybe has, like, a little bit of an introspective moment on like what he really thinks of himself and like was his life worth it or whatever maybe we could have a deep moment with Roger there maybe that's why it's called One Piece Deep all right uh, and then finally 24 years ago uh, he voluntarily uh, voluntarily surrenders himself to the Marines executed in Logtown the place of his birth in the East Blue Okay. Now, on the, on the bottom of this page, we have a few other random moments that are not in the timeline. Um, there's some unresolved mysteries of Roger. Number one, his romance with Rouge. You know, how did that come about? Who is Rouge to Roger? How did they meet and everything like that? How did that go down? Uh, his blade, Ace. So the name of his sword is Ace. I love this also because it's basically taking all the extra information from SBSs and Vivra cards and compiling them all in one location. That is basically what this Road to Laugh Tale is, okay? So he's like, you know, Roger had a sword named Ace. So he obviously named, you know, his son after his sword. So what is this, what exactly does that mean? You know, I would argue, why is the sword named Ace? Okay, was that just a cool name that he thought of? Um, it's possible that Ace could have been Roger's dad or maybe Roger's father figure if he didn't have a dad. Uh, most people in One Piece tend to be orphans growing up. I'm just noticing, so I'm thinking Roger was probably the same. Uh, so when we get the backstory with Roger, it might be like, yeah, his parents were dead and he was an orphan, but maybe there was a, uh, like, his uh, father figure that showed up or maybe like a big brother figure, and maybe their name was Ace. And so that's why he named the sword Ace. It's sort of like, you know, Goku had Grandpa Gohan, and then he named his own son Gohan. Maybe some situation like that I can see. Um... What was Roger's ultimate dream? Yeah, so there's the whole thing about when they were on the island, Whitebeard, Odin, and Roger, and he was explaining about what he wanted to do and why he wanted Odin to join his crew. We have to find the load poneglyphs. Odin can read them. We can find Laugh Tale. And then finally... And then he trails off, and we don't know what he says. Although the general consensus for a lot of people is Roger said something like, you know, then I'll throw the greatest pirate party in the world where everybody's invited, you know? And then Odin and Whitebeard are just kind of like dumbfounded by that because it's like such a childish thing to say. Also the same thing that Luffy said to Ace and Sabo when they were uh, like growing up in the Grey Terminal on Dawn Island, right? Same thing. So uh, there's that. There's also Shanks' tears. Remember when Roger came back, uh, he said something to Shanks and Shanks broke down crying and um, Shanks was still a young boy on Roger's crew but there seemed to be complex feelings behind his tears okay I think I think uh, Shanks was like probably 14 15 years old at this time now I always assumed 
that Roger just told Shanks, like, yeah, um, we went to Laugh Tale, but we were too early, and the reason Shanks broke down crying is because he knew how important this was to Roger, but now he realizes there's no way Roger's ever going to see it because he's going to die years and years before. Like, like it's just such a, like a kick in the teeth, really, really, where it's like, okay, we have to hurry up and get to this island as fast as possible before Roger dies, and they go through hell in a handbasket trying to find the place, and they finally get there, and it's like, oh, sorry, you're too early. Come back in 20 years or something and we can help you out. And so I assume that's what Roger told Shanks. And Roger was probably like, ah, don't worry about it, Shanks. It's not a big deal. We are great pirates anyway. It's okay. I won't get to see what the last island really was. Or I won't get to really experience the new world. And uh, Shanks just broke down crying because he was so upset that, you know, that. And maybe that's the reason right there why Shanks decided to become his own great pirate and become, you know, the captain and have his own crew. And like that was the drive because he remembered that moment where he's like, okay. Hey, Captain Roger, if you're not going to be here for that day, I'm going to be here for that day, and I'm going to make sure to uh, witness it for you, okay? So I, I think that makes sense there. So that's the first page, just all this stuff involving Roger. Uh, the next page involves the Poneglyphs, uh, the historical texts. So a lot of this stuff is stuff that we've already talked about before. I've made plenty of videos on the Poneglyphs. There's 30 unique stones that are, you know, scattered all over the world. Four of them are road Poneglyphs or load Poneglyphs. Nine of them are the Rio Poneglyphs, or which actually might translate out to real Poneglyphs. So we have load and road, Rio, real. Um, a lot of them are the ones we already know. It just kind of gives us like a quick overview of where the ones they like the most important ones are like the road poneglyph specifically so we have an interesting uh diagram here we have 26 years ago which was during the final journey and then we have the present time and this is just to showcase like basically what happened to the fourth one okay we see in roger's journey and in the straw hats journey the one at the zoo the one on the whale tree that one stayed the same location okay that didn't that one didn't move then we have um, the one that's on, well, Wano, but it might have moved because it even says right here that at the time it was located somewhere in the flower capital where Odin could just go into the capital and get a copy of it really quick and then leave. I've always thought that that was rather um, interesting. Just the fact that when the Roger Pirates stopped by Wano, Odin was like, yeah, hang tight really quick, wait a few hours, I'll go into town, get the Poneglyph etching, and then I'll be back. You have to really think about how this would have worked. That means Odin got back into the flower capital, snuck into the palace, knew exactly where that road poneglyph was, took an etching of it, and left. And this is while, like, Orochi was still in power, and, like, Kaido might have even have been there at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think he would have been. This was 26 years ago, right? I think uh, Kaido took over Wano around maybe 28 years ago, somewhere around there. Uh, although I don't think we have an exact number for that either, but somewhere around there. Actually, I think it was... I think it was mentioned it was 10 years right after God Valley because you had the incident with Higurashi approaching Kaido during his flashback and that was 10 years since God Valley so 28 years ago and uh, she was the one that was like I have a proposition for you Kaido you know uh, there's this man named Orochi who's ruling Wano he could use your help <laughs> and so that's what you know uh, got Kaido's attention focused on Wano itself right but still it's interesting that Odin only took like an hour or two running from the Curry region into the flower capital, getting an etching of this Poneglyph and just skipping out. You know, it had to be in a place where like um, a rubbing could be taken in no time flat. Interesting phrasing there, but that's what it says, okay? So um, just keep that in mind. It might have been moved to Onigashima because after Kaido took over, he might have been like, all right, Orochi, I'll be the giant dragon god, but I got some stipulations. I want that road poneglyph. I want that red poneglyph you have in the basement. Now, Orochi didn't really care about the One Piece. He only really cared about, you know, uh, basically ruining Wano for what they did to the Kurozumi clan. So Orochi was like, like, probably, yeah, fine, I don't care. I don't care, Kaido, take the road poneglyph if you want, or the load poneglyph. I don't even know how it's pronounced. Just get it out of here. I will replace it with a, hmm, I will replace it with, a jungle gym with a slide that's made after the Yamato no Orochi. 
Mm, that will be what I make, yes. So anyway, yeah, uh, Kaido probably took it, picked it up, and then, you know, uh, put it on Onigashima, where it's probably resting right now, okay? We just haven't seen it yet. Um, then we have the one that was in Big Mom's possession. Interesting, it was mentioned during Roger's time period that the location of that was not actually specified, because this was a long time ago. Big Mom might not have had a, a taut land the way it is now in the story back then, okay? Um, during the current story, it was uh, in the prisoner library, like in the archive area of Big Mom's castle, okay, on Whole Cake Chateau on Whole Cake Island. But back then, Whole Cake Island might not have existed the way it is now. So maybe Big Mom just had this road poneglyph, maybe she found it somewhere else in the world and just kept it on her boat, okay? And then eventually when she set up her own nation, she moved it to the, you know, Whole Cake Chateau, all right? So just to specify that. And then finally, we have the last one, which was originally on Fishman Island 26 years ago in the Sea Forest, right next to Joy Boy's apology letter, but now it's the mystery one. It's the one where we do not know where it's at. But they do give us some ideas on where it could be. And this is where it gets weird, ladies and gentlemen, okay? This is where it gets a little strange. Um, I'm just gonna read this. Where is the final red stone located? It must be somewhere unexplored by the Straw Hat crew. Is the final load poneglyph in a region the Straw Hats have yet to visit? Maybe it's in one of these places. And then they specifically show three islands and this is the prime example of one of these things is not like the other one of these things just doesn't belong the first island elbath the land of the giants ladies and gentlemen where the mighty yggdrasil god tree rises up from the depths the land where the greatest warriors of one piece reside maybe that's where the fourth road poneglyph is makes sense to me the second island, Full of Lead Island, or the Hachinosu, the Beehive, the location where the Rocks crew started up their crew all those years ago, where the Davy back fight was created, matey. Maybe that's where the fourth road poneglyph is. Hmm, has a lot of connections to pirate life, absolutely. The third island they mention by name, Vera. Vera. Okay, raise your hand if you know what Vera is. I mean, I know. I mean, because, you know, I'm me. Uh, if Artor, if you're watching this video, you're probably raising your hand too. By the way, I did that Jeopardy uh, uh, episode on Daniel Green's channel with Liam and then with Artor and then me. So go check that out. I'll put that a link somewhere. But that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. But anyway, yeah, I I'm sure that a few people know about Vera out there, but I'm sure the vast majority of you don't. Okay. So Vera was an island. We've never actually even seen it in the story. We don't even know what it looks like. But Vera was an island that was offhandedly mentioned by Nami way back in the East Blue Saga. Like, no joke, okay? Way back in Volume 11, right after the Arlong Park arc, right when Luffy got his first bounty, okay, and they were sailing. I don't even think they, I don't think they even reached uh, Logtown yet. No, no, this was even before Logtown. So this was in between Arlong Park and Logtown, okay? Nami buys a paper from the news coup. She flips it open, and she's just like, hmm... The world sure is in turmoil. There was another coup d'etat in Vera. And then that's it. And then Luffy's wanted poster pops out of the paper, which was 30 million, which was like his first bounty, which was a big deal. So that's it. That's it. One panel at the bottom of a page in chapter 96, volume 11. That was the first mention of Vera. And you know what? I got to be honest with you. I thought that that was the only mention of Vera. But I looked it up, and no, Vera was actually mentioned again. Actually, two more times. And that blew my mind, because I'm like, wait a second. What's going on here, Oda? Are you playing with me? Are you playing a game here, Oda? Do you think this is a damn game, Oda? This is serious. It's about One Piece. Okay. Volume 25. By the way, I'm glad I'm, I got a chance to mention this anyway, because I keep forgetting. A lot of people have shared this, but... Um, Volume 25 cover page, or the cover to the Tonko Bun. We got Luffy, we got Blackbeard, we got Shanks, we got Buggy. 
The irony is not lost on me. Also, we have Sengoku's goat. So I guess, you know, the four new Yonko and Senko Sengoku's goat. Uh, Sengoku's goat is now the fifth emperor. Also, we have that random coal miner guy in the background because this is the volume where Buggy gets captured and actually gets sent to Impel Down. So re presenting the six emperors, Buggy, Shanks, Luffy, Blackbeard, Goat, and random coal miner guy, you know? Yes! All right, so anyway, <clears throat> to be more serious here, uh, this is in chapter... Uh, hold on, it's at the end of this chapter. It's on chapter... Da, 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 228. Mont Blanc Cricket, the last boss of the Monkey Mountain Allied Force. Holy crap, that's a long name. Anyway, this is the chapter where they meet Cricket, and they're hanging out in his house, and he's talking all about how Nolan was not this liar of epic proportions. He was actually a very uh, trustworthy man. He was a great adventurer, and he's my ancestor. And he actually pulls out Nolan's old logbook from 400 years ago, and Nami starts reading through it. <clears throat> Amazing! This is a log from 400 years ago! The Age of Kayan, 1120, June 21st. Remember back when Oda used to keep records of stuff? Uh, clear skies. Sailed from the lively town of Vera. So, Noland put this in his log that he sailed away from a town called Vera. And somebody actually noticed this and sent in a question which was answered later on in the same volume in the SBS. Where is Vera? First, it was the scene of a coup d'etat in Volume 11, then the Wild Town in Chapter 228. What's going on there? And Oda actually answers this. <clears throat> well, well, that's very shrewd of you. Vera was a thriving town back in Nolan's day 400 years ago, but presently, because of the many revolutions that have happened there, it has become a dangerous place. So, instead of asking what's going on in Vera, maybe one should ask what's going on in the world? And I believe you'll soon begin to understand. It's a small nation on the Grand Line, smaller than Alabasta, but I wouldn't want to go there on vacation. I'm going to highlight one moment here, one, 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 one thing that Oda says in this response. <clears throat> so instead of asking what's going on in Vera, maybe one should ask what's going on in the world. I'm going to read that again. So instead of asking what's going on in Vera, no, no. The shit Oda does. That's what he does. He's like, ah, don't worry about this. What you should be asking is about- th Oh, no, no, no. We're not pulling this switcheroo bullshit, Oda, okay? I want to know what's going on in Vera right now. Yeah. So, this is frustrating because I could see this both ways. I could see they put Vera on here just to mess with us because it is so out of place. Elbaf, Land of the Giants, mentioned many, 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 many times in the story. I think the Straw Hats have to go there. Usopp wants to go there. We've met many giants that have been from there. Okay. Then Hachinosu, full of lead island. Yeah, it showed up rather recently in the story, but it connects back to rocks and the Davy back fight and all that kind of sh crazy shit. You know what I mean? So that's a relevant location. Then Vera. You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't fit. So I think it's either, you know, I don't know if it was Oda. I mean, he probably was involved in this, but it was probably honestly just the editors and other people that compiled all this information together in one place. But Oda, I feel like, had to look over it and, like, like scan his eyes over it at least and be like, yeah, that's all okay. You know, at least that much, right? So they either put Vera in there to make us think, like, maybe Vera is more relevant, or they put it on in there to mess with us, to troll with us. Like, yeah, we're going to put Elbaf, Full of lead, and then Vera. They might as well have just put, like, Elbath, full of lead, and then... Mm, maybe the last road Poneglyph is on... Karate Island! You know, just like, maybe it is on Karate Island, I don't know! So yeah, now, they're also listing a bunch of other islands as well, like Risky Red Island, Raijin Island, Mistoria Island, the Balloon Terminal, uh, Yukiryu Island, Empty Bluffs Island, which is Kalibali Island, which is where, you know, Buggy's at. That would be really hilarious there. Apple Nine Island, and it even goes on to say there's a lot of other obscure islands all throughout the Grand Line. 
you, you know, any any of these other places could work. Uh, Risky Red Island, Rigen Island, and Mistoria Island were the three islands that originally the log points to when you land in the New World. The Straw Hats just skipped over all those, though, just to go straight to uh, Punk Hazard. Uh, so that was funny. So if we backtrack, uh, I I'm just saying, if I was going to look for a, like a lost Poneglyph, I would probably go to Mistoria Island because it sounds mysterious, and, you know, the Poneglyphs are mysterious. So that's the first place I would check. Um, if we backtrack to Rigen Island, I wouldn't say no to that because that location has always been fascinating to me. Um, Apple Nine Island is just an island off the shore of Dressrosa. You know, it was one of the islands that found out about what happened to Dressrosa first after the birdcage dissipated. Probably nothing crazy there. Uh, Kalibali Island was just the island that Buggy had his base of operations in. Uh, Balloon Terminal is just an abandoned sky island. Uh, I guess there could be some stuff there, but I think they just put those in there just to, like, listing islands. Like, we don't know where it could be. It could be anywhere. Could be on vacation island for all I know. Oh, man. But Vera, the fact that Vera was mentioned. Oh, by the way, when Oda says it in the um, SBS, he says, it's a small nation on the Grand Line, similar to, uh, smaller than Alabasta. That's it. That's all he says. He doesn't say it's near Alabasta. He doesn't say it's in the first half of the Grand Line. He just says it's an island in the Grand Line that's smaller than Alabasta, and it's a rather war-torn nation right now, and it's a place you would not like to go on vacation. That's it. That's all he says. So it could be in the New World. It could be somewhere around the Straw Hats are at right now, for all we know. How crazy would it be if it's like, we think we're going to go to Elbaf next, or we think we're going to go to Lodestar next, or we think we're just going to go straight to Lo Laugh Tale next. And it's like, actually, no, we're going to stop over at Vera for a bit. Wait a second. There was a port town that the Roger Pirates stopped at before they went to Laugh Tale. Could that have been Vera? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it could be Karate Island. I don't know. But that's that. Okay. So uh, that's that page about the Poneglyphs. Uh, moving on to this uh, page. This is the last page we're going to be discussing because all the other pages are just um, like, uh, you know, sketch art for Oda. You know, all the different, you know, Straw Hat raid outfits during um, Onigashima, which is interesting. Go check it out. But yeah, this is the last page. And uh, we talked about a lot of this stuff already. It's um, the worst taboo. Rox D. Zebek, Roger's strongest adversary. The mythical Rox. Um, let's see, Roger's most formidable foe was a renowned heinous pirate. Let's take a look at the man whose ambition led him to violate the world's greatest taboos. Uh, he formed the Rocks Pirates 44, over 44 years ago. Uh, we can kind of piece that together just given with Kaido's backstory. He was 15 when he first joined. Big Mom was already sort of part of that. Um, you know, we see the scene where Kaido joins the crew. We saw in that flashback, uh, and we don't really get any other extra information about it. Uh, 38 years ago is the God Valley incident. Roger and Garp fight together to save a group of celestial dragons and their slaves from the ultimate crew, the Rocks Pirates. That's what I mean right there. It's like, hey, listen, you know, Garp and Rogers, like, hey, we're not fans of the Tenry Beto, and we're not fans of slavery, but if we let Rocks win, it's going to be even worse for the world. So we have to beat them back, even if it means defending the scum of the earth, which is the Tenry Beto, right? So you know he was bad if that's the kind of crap that was like, you know, getting Roger and Garp to work together. You know what I mean? We also have mention of the individual members. We have Big Mom, Kaido, Whitebeard, and then Shiki, the Golden Lion. We see another scene from Strong World, Chapter Zero, where Shiki met with Whitebeard on his ship. Um, Kaido's Devil Fruit has a deep tie to the God Valley incident. You know, I just realized... If, because I think God Valley was the last home of the dragons. I think the Tenerubito had actual dragons that they rode around on. Ryuma cut one down 400 years ago in Wano. Like, that actually happened. And then the dragon population were living on God Valley. And then rocks barged in one day and killed all the dragons. So it would make sense that the Ua Ua Nomi model as your dragon would be found on the island that's the ancestral home of the goddamn dragons. You know what I mean? Maybe dragons ruled the earth before the Tenerubito before the Lunarians. Maybe the dragons were like the god figures that built the One Piece world, okay? And then when humans came around, they just started subjugating them. Eventually the Lunarians came out. Maybe they fought against them. Maybe there was this giant war between dragons and Lunarians, and maybe that explains why they can breathe fire and shit. And then eventually after that, the world government took over, knocked the Lunarians down off their perch. They reigned in all the remaining dragons, controlled them, and then Rox woke up one day, had some breakfast, and he's like, alright, I'm gonna wreck their shit, you know? Oh, and then that's where we are right now.
<laughs> yeah, but I, it makes sense that, you know, Kaido's fruit would have been found in the area where it's probably, like, it was probably Dragon Central there, okay? Uh, also, you could go into even more detail on what Dragon's name is, like Monkey D. Dragon, Luffy's father. There you go, Tenryubito, the dragons, the celestial dragons, the dragons that were developed by Punk Hazard, uh, by Punk Hazard, by Vegapunk on Punk Hazard, um, trying to replicate the dragons so the Tenryubito could get back to their roots, and, um, you know, ride around on dragons and control the world from above like they maybe used to back in the day. So it all connects back to dragons, man. Do not overlook the significance of dragons in this damn story. Um, the one who uses Zebek's name uh, mentions that Blackbeard's ship is the saber of Zebek or the saber of Zebek and then Zebek. So what's the connection there? Uh, and then we have some individual members, some other members. We have Captain John, of course. It was mentioned that, you know, he was, you know, a former member of the crew. He had the treasure. We see a scene of his zombie, the general zombie. We saw it thriller bark and then this is a travesty this is a shame right here but at the very bottom of this page like the last thing this tiny little sentence even more pirates got their start on this crew other notable members include the likes of silver axe and wang Zhi, although they are not as well known Screw you, all right? The most famous pirate in this entire story. Is it Luffy? Nah. Is it Roger? Hell no. Is it Rox? Absolutely not. The most famous pirate in One Piece is, has always been, and will always continue to be, Wang Zhi! All right, so that's that. And then uh, just a bunch of really cool concept art. Okay, so that's the video. Uh, this was a long one. It was a lot longer than I thought it would be, right? But, uh, yeah, it's kind of important that we discussed all this shit. All right, so anyway, um, thanks, you guys, for watching. Uh, there will be a volume two of this out at some point. Maybe we'll find out some even more information about that. Um, I don't know when it'll be out, but we'll see. We have a whole month, so um, I don't know. Go back and, I guess, reread all of One Piece for all the secret messages that Oda left in there. Maybe that's why Oda's giving us this month. He's just like, all right, everybody, I'm giving you one month. Go back, reread the whole manga, and then come back for our last saga because I'm going to blow your socks off, okay? I guess we'll see. Uh, I don't have the next Animal Facts up yet, but it's coming soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Teching, signing out.